Hi, if you're watching this video, you must be at least a little curious about what's inside a PC. Or maybe you finally decided it's time to build your own. Well, good for you. It's fun. And if we can do it, anyone can. Thanks for purchasing Tech TV's How to Build Your Own PC, part of our series with Q Publishing, the leader in computer education. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Patrick Norton. Now, we're the host of Tech TV's The Screen Savers. Now, every night we tell, well, we help people just like you to solve their computer problems. As we like to put it, Patrick, we're saving the world one computer at a time. But right now, we're going to show you how to build one of these things. Now, over the next hour or so, we're going to show you step by step how to find the right parts to build a PC and then how to put them together. We're also going to show you our expert building tips and tricks and we're going to try to demystify the whole process to make building a PC easy enough for anybody, even us, to understand <laughs> that's what we do best. And as if that weren't enough, as we go along, you can find more information and extra tips and tricks at our website, techtv.com slash build a PC. You ready, Patrick? I was born ready. <laughs> All right. Let's start a little bit by talking about the advantages and, and more importantly, even disadvantages of building your own computer. Is there an advantage to building your own computer? There's an advantage, okay. but maybe I better start with the disadvantages to scare anybody off who hasn't really thought about this. You do, you do want to think about it first, because there are some things that your own home-built computer is not great at. For instance, there are issues about compatibility. When you buy a pre-built computer, the manufacturer has tested all the parts to make sure they all work together and they all work with the software. You're combining parts of your own choice. Some parts may never have ever been combined together before. So there could be compatibility issues between the parts themselves and the software you'll be running. Also cost. I think a lot of people think they're going to save money by building their own. It's not a guarantee. Yeah. Dell, Compaq, Micro, all these big giant companies, they buy parts in the millions. You buy one. Now, if you're careful, you can think you're saving money, but chances are when you do the math later on, you're doing this because you want to, not because you're going to save big cash. Another problem is you're not going to get tech support on this stuff. Uh, you might get on individual parts, <laughs> you might get on the software, but as soon as you say, well, the Framit soundboard doesn't work with the mega, uh, Megalodon uh, video card, who are you going to call? There's no one number to call. There's no one person who assembled the whole computer. Yeah. You, you're going to have to do your own tech support. But hey, that's what you got into this for, right? To learn how to do it yourself. Do it yourself, right. There's also, of course, the issue of things like skin knuckles. <laughs> we and have the scars course, to prove it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, the advantages yeah. are many. And I don't want to discourage you completely because, first of all, you're going to get mm -hmm. exactly the computer you want. You specify every single bit and piece of that thing. You're going to get a computer that matches your needs, your wants, your desires. And you know what? The best part? Bragging rights from your friends. <laughs> well, let's get building. Come on. First of all, let's talk about preparing your work area, getting the right tools together. And, uh, well, we'll start with the work area. I have to tell you, I have worked in all kinds of conditions building PCs, everything from the dining room table to my kids' bedroom floor. Dorm but rooms, dorm garages. Rooms. You've done it everywhere, too. And you said, but this is an ideal, perfect fantasy. Yeah, but it's so nice. Yeah. If you can get something like this, so it would be great. First of all, it's clean. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get any fuzz or dirt or lint in your PC. It's well lit. Really nice, yeah. because a lot of this stuff is tiny, and when you get old like me, not you, Patrick, but yeah. when you get old like me, it's hard to see a lot of the little fine uh, lines and the and the lettering and stuff. So it's, it's dry. Look too. how clean it is, isn't it? Dry is important. Why? Because computers don't like wet. And this is one that you might not think of. If you can do this, it mm -hmm. really is great, especially in dry climates. No carpet. Static electricity. Watch. Stop. The worst thing for your computer is static electricity. It doesn't hurt too much when I touch Patrick's nose. Speak for yourself. But those thousands and thousands of volts mm -hmm. going into those tiny integrated circuits yeah. can literally break them, fry them. So no static electricity. Here's a little tip. If you right. don't, if you'd have to work on a carpet, a little trick. Oh, that. You put a little spritz about a cap full of uh, fabric softener in a spritz bottle of water mm -hmm. and you spritz the carpet. And the fabric softener actually kills the static electricity. Sledgehammers aside, you don't need that many tools to build a PC. It's really pretty simple. Yeah. We've actually got kind of more than you need here. It's all sort of, yeah, more than you need. It's all neatly arrayed. 
Container for small parts. We of course. This is great. We can build computers all the time, so we've been saving small parts our entire adult lives. Uh, what else do we need? We uh, second thing's most important. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, ladies and gentlemen. One of the plus screwdrivers. Yeah. Patrick is an old-fashioned kind of guy. Likes to use the manuals. I personally, I'm lazy. I like to use uh, an automatic screwdriver. I think power. it does a power tool is always good, isn't it? And I, that's, what's nice is it, it does the work for you. So you can screw it in. Now, Patrick's uh, one disagreement with these, and I think you're right, is you can over torque. You mm -hmm. can overdrive a screw. So rather than using your, uh, you know, your battery powered super duper screw uh, buster and, and portable drill, maybe one of these in an inexpensive. Uh, kind of a, a screwdriver. Right. This is not going to have so much torque that yeah. can actually hurt anything. Even if you're not using that, you don't you need do it by to hand. Cone it no. Over. Be yeah. gentle. Yeah. So these are all the must have. Any other yeah. must haves? You know what? You're going to be trimming, you're going to be cutting, you might be playing around. A box cutter, a standard utility knife. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful with it. Kids, don't use this one without the permission kids. of your parents. Yeah. You 18 cut yourself. or older. Don't blame me. Absolutely. Now, we also want to talk about something. These are probably shouldn't be on the optional list, but some kind of needle nose pliers very or hemostats, handy. something you can very, reach very in. Handy. You're putting jumpers in, you're pulling cables in and out. I drop screws all the time yeah. into the case, and this is probably oftentimes the only way you can get in there and pull mm -hmm. the screw out. And you don't want to leave any loose metal yeah. inside your case. Not only does it exactly. sound bad when it rattles around, it can short out stuff. Uh, what are these? Things? These are zip strips. Now, you're going to have a lot of cables inside your computer. Now, you might do it just to make it look neat and tidy, or you might do it because the less cable sprawl you have, the easier airflow will be inside the system. You basically, you wrap this around the group of cables, you insert neatly so, and you... These are so handy. And they're inexpensive. I have some, I just keep them yeah. around all the time. They, even outside your computer, all that yeah. massive cables you have behind your desk, these can be very handy for organizing them and keeping them in shape. Yes, so do. there are the tools, both the necessary and the nice to, and the nice to have. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a sledgehammer, kids, to be honest. <laughs> The tools you'll, ha you'll need are a parts container, a Phillips screwdriver, a box cutter is handy, needle nose pliers, and zip strips to tie everything down and keep it nice and neat. Now, this is the fun part, let's go shopping. It's good. This is fun, I love doing this. Before you run out with your cash and your credit cards and your hot little hands burning a hole in your pocket, whatever it is, mixing metaphors, you need to do your homework. <laughs> well, that's absolutely right, because you don't want to buy more than you need or less than you need. So take some time to yeah. spec out your new PC. What does that mean, to spec it Basically, out? Basically, decide on, the, on the, the list of specifications defining the contents of your PC. How do we it's know? It's the parts list. How do we get a parts list? Okay, you can go to the screen savers. We have a list of like our favorite sub-1000 PCs, even cheaper. You can you know, look at all those those expert sites like Anantech and Tom's Hardware, all that good Magazines stuff. Magazines will tell you. Magazines will tell you. Talk to your friends, see what they're using. Basically, come up with a list of parts. The motherboard, the processor, the graphics card, the audio card, the case, the memory, all this good stuff. You want to check your list. Even if you don't maybe use our list of parts, check your list against our list. Make sure you have one of each because if you don't have all the parts you need, nothing worse than building a PC, getting home and going to go online and realize you don't have a modem. Right. Or, or buying more parts than you need or buying right. a part that doesn't work with another part, things like that. Very right. important. You can get everything you need, at least the beginning of the research, online here. Yeah. The PC breaks down into a few simple components. You're going to start with your CPU. That's the processor, the brains mm -hmm. of the computer. You also need memory chips. That's where the data that you're working on and the programs you're running are stored while the CPU is working on them. What else are we going to put in there? Well, you're going to need a video card. That takes the pictures. It basically turns the zeros and ones the PC needs into the pretty pictures you look at on the screen. No, that video is not the only card. You're going to need a sound card mm -hmm. as well if you want to hear stuff. And you're probably going to want to get some fans for the processor to keep them cool. That's a big one. You're going to want speakers for the sound card, a power supply and a case. They usually come together, but that's to stick everything in. Right. And then finally, the most important, actually it's not finally, but the most important part, which is the motherboard. Why, what is the motherboard? Okay, the motherboard, it's kind of like, you know how you have a frame for a car and you bolt all the parts onto the frame? The chassis, yeah. The chassis. Well, you know what? It, your, your case is kind of the chassis, but the real heart of your computer is the motherboard. It's where your processor, your memory, all of your cards, all of your hard drives, everything connects to the motherboard. It's the heart of your machine. The biggest circuit board in your computer. Sometimes mm -hmm. they call it the main board. You'll also need storage, right. the hard drive, the floppy drives, the CD drives. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get online, you'll need either a modem or a network interface card. You don't have to do all that research if you don't want to. Just go to our website, 
techtv.com slash build a PC, yeah. and we've got a list of the components we're going to use in my PC and Patrick's PC, so you can do exactly what we recommend. But first, let's recap. Basic PC components you're going to need to buy include the central processing unit, or CPU, your RAM, your memory chips. You're going to have to have a video card so you can see things that sound